Hello. Uh, let's review what we've done in previous session and what we're going to do now. So we made this simple interface for adding a link with URL and priority and its favorite to this table on the right. Well, it's very basic. And uh, as you remember, it works like, uh, well, very simple. We send the data over WebSocket it refreshes the page, so the SSR part of SwelteKit re-renders this table with newly added data. Well, it is fine, but we can do much better than that. And this is where uh, Svelte stores will help us. So let me quickly tell you what Svelte store is. Uh, let's go to the tutorial. They have really nice tutorial okay i'll make it bigger and myself smaller okay so here you can see that they have simple counter thing and the way it is done is the value is displayed here and they uh, render this variable and they subscribe to an object count to get the latest value. While this is a possible use case scenario, they could just write this. And I think in later tutorials they do it. So what is count? If we go to the count from the stores file, you will see that it's a simple constant uh, made by a writable function. So writable function from package swell store is a store, <laughs> sorry for this, uh, that has initial value and it has set and uh, update and subscribe methods on it. So subscribe you just saw here, uh, the way they implemented it in this example first. Uh, the update looks like this when you get the latest value and you can do something with it and set is basically you're like whatever is in the store I want to set it right now and subscribe you can use in the code like it was here or you can use a special swell syntax with a dollar sign uh, in your template and it will automatically subscribe displays value and when component is destroyed it will unsubscribe so this is basic writable store, but there is also like custom stores that you can build. So custom store, you use it the same way, you get the value here, and also it has um, methods in it, like increment, decrement, reset. And uh, this is uh, how it is created. So the constant is here, it is defined by calling this function it still uses a writable but instead of returning the whole writable object another object is created with this uh, subscribe method that is just passed as it is but instead of exposing set and update another methods are exposed like increment decrement and set that uses update and set under the hood so it's a kind of uh, encapsulation of what is used inside and outside you just provide a public interface for this store. So this is what we are going to do today. I hope that uh, example was clear from the tutorial. Well, it should be clear because it's official tutorial. Uh, so let's start building our custom store. First of all, we need to go here to the library folder and create a client folder. Because like all the client related code that is not component, uh, I mean page component or other routing like layout, uh, it will be stored here. So, and inside we'll create stores directory. We might have multiple stores in the future. And let's now, let's just have uh, 
links or just links store I think links dot store TS so well it's simple TypeScript file and uh, we will import writable from swell store just like in the example and uh, we'll call it store here writable this inner store variable we will go on, go into use inside this file but it won't be exposed now let's define some initial state and also typing for the store so i think let's start with typing we will definitely export it um, because link store okay um, first what we want from this store is we want it to keep references to existing links um, items that will be displayed in this table also we want to display state of the adding link like are they adding it right now is it like processing on the server is there is any error and so on so let's write it down first it's like links which is array of links mm -hmm. and here we should say type we import in just the type next uh, let's call it is uh, saving is adding is adding boolean and uh, add uh, error which will be either string either undefined okay so this looks good and let's define our public interface for the store so it will be export const link store we will expose subscribe we will expose add now let's see what github copilot recommend us to do wow that's a lot of code let's analyze it quickly uh, so it updates the state of the store then it makes HTTP request to an API which in our case doesn't exist we use web sockets then it parses result and save it to the store and also in case of error it also updates the store this is a wonderful stuff let's uh, how to complete this and uh, change it a little bit okay uh, let me figure out what this error is type unknown is unassignable to type links tour hmm um okay uh we'll figure out with it in a little bit in a in a moment first of all instead of doing http call we need to do a websocket call and uh, i think we need a little bit a little function um, that will do all of this type save but also like shorter now it takes five lines to do here here and here and i want it ideally to be done in just one line so let's make a function uh, mutate store okay uh what it will do yeah it will set state this is true and I want it to be partial state. Partial means uh, we don't have to provide all the fields from this interface, just some of the fields are fine. Okay. 
and we actually need uh, not set it but update it uh, let's figure out what's wrong with update so updater I think something changed might be in the um, latest version of swell that I'm not aware of let's look at it so updater is a function that takes a value of type T and returns a value of type T well this is what we are doing here store ah I got it I got it so we haven't typed this store yet so let's do it should be link store and I think I want to uh, and make an initial value shell initial state yeah so empty links and array, array is in false error undefined okay wonderful stuff so update state or just s and it should be s and state so I'm destructing uh, existing state and new state and making a new object out of it and update the store value okay now once we have this function ready let's try to replace these five lines of code with just one okay let's figure out so is that in true is that in true add error undefined undefined wonderful so we've made just one line out of five let's use it everywhere mutate store uh, yep okay so here we don't have previous um, state of the links so we need to get it We need to use a get function from swell store package and provide it with the store that will get the latest version of the data inside and now we will have the links okay wonderful so is that in false okay and we we'll replace this part now we can mutate store here too just TypeScript here knows that error is of unknown type uh, let's write it here just so it's visible and we need to cover cases where it is an error uh, of class error or it's something else so uh, what we can do is we can use TypeScript type words like uh, one uh, that GitHub Copilot suggests is to use instance of. Uh, you may you may see other type guards like type of. Uh, that's usually used to check if if this variable is of string value. Uh, right now we use instance of error and inside here if we want to display type it will say oh yeah now me as typescript i know that this is error but here i know well sorry it's unknown okay so we also need to cover negative case scenario here like if it's not an error but it's something unknown let's just write it as unknown error okay cool we've covered all of that um ba -dum -bum -bum. the only thing left is this part uh, we need to use web sockets for sending data right now web socket uh, connection client side connection lives in the um, in link create component here it is and we need to save it in the well I use services folder websocket file and here I will create the websocket itself 
that we'll export later. But before we export it, I want to wait for uh, it to finish opening. Okay, so this is a good event listener, but I want to export. Uh, yes. Let's call it here WebSocket and export it just as socket and it will be promise. So I want to await it. Oh, actually, let's let's make it a little bit better. So let's use a function like get socket. Uh, now we can call it just socket here. What it will do, it will, well, return socket yes but also it will await for this event listener to be called so let's see uh, we can have a simple variable here is opened and initiated once it is open so we'll make this function a sync and we'll await for promise uh -huh. resolve resolve uh, no or oh, just true and success okay so github copilot made the work for me <laughs> instead of me um, let me explain what is happening here so first of all, we are awaiting the moment in time when socket is opened because it can take, you know, hundreds of milliseconds, maybe, maybe less, maybe more. Um, and we want to use the exposed socket only once while well, it's ready, not earlier. Otherwise we will run into some errors. I'll just move this part here if we know that it is open we will return it otherwise we will await this promise and then return the socket so inside the promise part what is happening is we add in the listener for open event this is when connection is established and uh, when it is established we first of all mark this is open to true because you know this get socket function can be used in multiple places of our application but we only want to make single instance of this connection so uh, next time this function will be called when is opened is already true it will just instantly be returned as is and promise won't be you know created again and new subscription won't be created i mean subscription for event listener okay this is cool uh now we have the socket we expose and get socket function let's uh get the socket here So because we are using wheat, which has top level await syntax, we can just type await here and it won't be an error. So and we can wait for the rest of the file. Uh, I mean, the rest of the file will wait for socket to be initiated. Okay, nice. So we'll use socket here. We will send the data to um, to the backend and instead of all of this and parsing error here uh, we will parse it in the uh, in other place so um, because it's not as uh, a web socket communication between client and server happens not like request response 
mm, like a synchronous thing, you know, like you send request in the same piece of code, you await the promise and then you parse response on the next line. With WebSocket, it works a little bit more asynchronous. Like you send command in one place of the code and then you like, okay, I've done my responsibility. There should be another piece of code that listens for the answer for, you know, for the response. So let's see. We need to subscribe to the socket uh, somewhere here. Oh, well, GitHub Copilot is really good. So let's see what it makes for us. If we receive a message, we try to parse the data out of it and then we mutate the store, adding new link into it. Wonderful stuff, just like we did here. Okay, now we can remove this. We remove try catch. We won't parse errors here. We'll parse them in another place. I will add uh, to do here. Handle error, yes. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah, I think I can remove this commit because GitHub Copilot will help me make uh, the proper code. Uh, when it will be time to write code for handle error. Okay, so that was just add function. Sorry, I dragged a little bit from the stores itself and we implemented the interaction with the backend through WebSockets. Okay, what else we have? So first of all, we, yeah, we want to add, but we also want to, you know, get the whole list of, of links from the backend. Well, let's see how this part of the code works. And later on, we'll implement links, uh, links, uh, the whole list thing. So first of all, we go here, we remove this uh, server side rendered load function. Uh, then we go to link create and instead of using WebSocket directly, we use the link store. Okay, it's being imported. We can simplify the import here. Okay, for now, this one, this pass will work. Uh, actually, yeah, let's make it a little bit nicer. So I'll make an index.ts file here in the root of the client folder. And we will re-export everything from stores link store yeah so we will basically export all the stores in this file and services they will be used by our stores so we don't need to expose them okay let's see so is anything wrong here? Cannot find module. Ah, okay. I probably should write dot slash to make it a relative path to the current folder. Okay, and if we go to the create component, we can now remove this part of it and it should just work. Okay. Uh huh. Uh -huh, my IDE cannot find it now, but it's fine. So, um, in create link, we'll, instead of using socket send, we'll just say link store add link, and it will make JSON stringify inside. And instead of using location reload, we won't reload anymore because the magic will happen under the hood. Uh, and in the list, we are going to also use link store. Mm, 
okay so and display it uh, like this so link store as link okay seems like it, sh it should work now let's see I save here the page is reloaded and let's see if we have any errors Uh, ah, right, right, right. Okay, so we cannot just subscribe to the store. I mean, we cannot use store.links with this syntax. Uh, what we can do to use this short syntax is just to save a links to uh, links store dot links yeah well no 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 that's not the way it should be wait ah right sorry I forgot I forgot something important so when we subscribe to the store like this we have access to all of the properties inside the you know the store state one of them is links so what we should do is we write dot links here and now i guess it should work okay we can close this we don't expect any errors so our table now is empty because we didn't implement any code that fetches data from the back end and returns all the links we'll do it in the, in the next section just right after this one so let's try now if we use add link here it should work as expected and refresh the links table immediately so we can try it with uh, well i'll just fill random stuff Okay, and it doesn't work. Let's figure out why. Unexpected token created in blah, 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 blah. So something happened when we tried to parse the, the data that came from the backend. To debug what is happening, why it is, you know, not what we expect, we need to go to the backend and find it. So we return a string here that starts with created and uh, you know if it's just a plain text it's not a valid json uh, let's remove this part and just return stringified a link property okay try it again wonderful so now it works let's try a couple more times with different settings here okay works as expected let's quickly go through the network tab to see if um, it's what uh, we think it is first of all we send this qwe.com uh, link and we got back the same link but now it has ID it has created ad updated ad title now you know default fields that we fill in the database and same for the second link so it is now very uh well works as expected let's review the store that we created so the store has a type of what's stored inside in our case it's array it is is adding boolean or we can we can use it on this button to show load in animation uh, we feel the error if something happens I uh, know we don't we don't handle the error yet uh, and uh, we we have initial state we have the store itself we wrote a simple function to mutate it in a single line I think it actually works in, in an immutable way, but 
mutate just simple uh, simple function name to understand what it does and uh, we get response from the data but right now we only handle positive scenario so if any error happens let's say database rejects our data because I know URL is not unique or we forgot to enter any URL at all and it's empty but we expect it to be not empty or later on we'll add some validation like okay URL should be formatted as you know valid URLs uh, we need to also handle other type of messages so uh, let's wrap this se se session and uh, in the next one that will appear just in a few moments uh, we will add more events more situations that we'll handle here okay thank you see you ah, where is the